the Congressional Black Caucus is an organization representing the black members of the United States Congress. Membership is exclusive to African Americans. Its chair in the 114th Congress is Representative G. K. Butterfield of North Carolina. Ames, the caucus describes its goals as positively influencing the course of events pertinent to African Americans and others of similar experience and situation, and achieving greater equity for persons of African descent in the design and content of domestic and international programs and services. The CBC encapsulates these goals in the following priorities, closing the achievement and opportunity gaps in education, assuring quality health care for every American, focusing on employment and economic security, ensuring justice for all, retirement security for all Americans, increasing welfare funds, and increasing equity in foreign policy. Representative Eddie Bernice Johnson, D. Tex, has said. The Congressional Black Caucus is one of the world's most esteemed bodies, with a history of positive activism unparalleled in our nation's history. Whether the issue is popular or unpopular, simple or complex, the CBC has fought for 30 years to protect the fundamentals of democracy. Its impact is recognized throughout the world. The Congressional Black Caucus is probably the closest group of legislators on the Hill. We work together almost incessantly, we are friends and, more importantly, a family of freedom fighters. Our diversity makes us stronger, and the expertise of all of our members has helped us be effective beyond our numbers. Mark Anthony Neal, a professor of African American Studies and Popular Culture at Duke University, wrote a column in late 2008 that the Congressional Black Caucus and other African American centered organizations are still needed and should take advantage of the political will that Obama's campaign has generated. Membership The caucus has grown steadily as more black members have been elected. In 1969, the caucus had nine members as of 2013, it had 43 members, including two who are non-voting members of the House, representing the District of Columbia and the U.S. Virgin Islands. Equal Senate members equals, as of 2014, there have been only seven black senators since the caucus's founding. Edward Brooke, a Republican senator from Massachusetts in the 60s and 70s, was not a member of the CBC. In 2013, Tim Scott, Republican of South Carolina, also chose not to join the CBC after being appointed to fill the Senate seat of Jim DeMint. The remaining five black senators, all Democrats, have served as members of the Congressional Black Caucus. They are Senator Cory Booker of New Jersey, elected in 2013 and currently serving. Carol Mosley Braun of Illinois, then Senator Barack Obama of Illinois, Mo Cowan of Massachusetts, and Roland Burris. Burris was appointed by Illinois Governor Rod Blagojevich in December 2008 to fill Obama's seat for the remaining two years of his Senate term. Cowan was appointed to temporarily serve until a special election after the seat was vacated by John Kerry following his appointment as Secretary of State. Equals Black Republicans in the CBC equals, the caucus is officially non-partisan. But, in practice, the vast majority of African Americans elected to Congress have been members of the Democratic Party. Eight black Republicans have been elected to Congress since the caucus was founded in 1971. Senator Edward Brooke of Massachusetts, Delegate Melvin H. Evans of the Virgin Islands, Representative Gary Franks of Connecticut, Representative J. C. Watts of Oklahoma, Representative Alan West of Florida, Senator Tim Scott of South Carolina, Representative Will Head of Texas, and Representative Mia Love of Utah. Of these eight, only half have joined the CBC, Evans, Franks, West, and Love. Edward Brooke was the only serving black U.S. Senator when the CBC was founded in 1971, but he never joined the group and often clashed with its leaders. In 1979 Melvin H. Evans, a non-voting delegate from the Virgin Islands, became the first Republican member in the group's history. Gary Franks was the first Republican voting congressman to join in 1991, though he was at times excluded from CBC strategy sessions, skipped meetings, and threatened to quit the caucus. J. C. Watts did not join the CBC when he entered Congress in 1995, and after Franks left Congress in 1997, 
no Republicans joined the CBC for 14 years until Alan West joined the caucus in 2011, though fellow freshman Congressman Tim Scott declined to join. After West was defeated for re-election, the CBC became a Democrat-only caucus once again in 2013. After Democrat Mo Cowan stepped down in July 2013, the political situation bore a striking resemblance to four decades earlier, the only serving black Republican congressman was a U.S. senator who refused to join the CBC. In 2014, two black Republicans were elected to the House. Upon taking office, Will Head of Texas declined to join the caucus, while Mia Love of Utah, the first black Republican congresswoman, joined, declaring an intent to try to take that that thing apart from the inside out, and opining that in order to effect change, you can't do it from the outside in equals non-black membership equals, all past and present members of the caucus have been black. In 2006, while running for Congress in a Tennessee district which is 60% black, white candidate Steve Cohen pledged to apply for membership in order to represent his constituents. However, after his election, his application was refused. Although the bylaws of the caucus do not make race a prerequisite for membership, Former and current members of the caucus agreed that the group should remain exclusively black. In response to the decision, Representative Cohen referred to his campaign promise as a social faux pas, because it's their caucus and they do things their way. You don't force your way in. You need to be invited. Representative William Lacey Clay, J.R. D. Mo. The son of Representative William Lacey Clay, S.R. D. Mo a co-founder of the caucus, said, Mr. Cohen asked for admission, and he got his answer. He's white and the caucus is black. It's time to move on. We have racial policies to pursue and we are pursuing them, as Mr. Cohen has learned. It's an unwritten rule. It's understood. Clay also issued the following statement. Quite simply, Representative Cohen will have to accept what the rest of the country will have to accept a euro there has been an unofficial congressional white caucus for over 200 years, and now it's our turn to say who can join the club. He does not, and cannot, meet the membership criteria, unless he can change his skin color. Primarily, we are concerned with the needs and concerns of the black population, and we will not allow white America to infringe on those objectives. Later the same week Rep. Tom Tancredo, RCO, objected to the continued existence of the CBC as well as the Democratic Congressional Hispanic Caucus and the Republican Congressional Hispanic Conference arguing that, it is utterly hypocritical for Congress to extol the virtues of a color-blind society while officially sanctioning caucuses that are based solely on race. If we are serious about achieving the goal of a color-blind society, Congress should lead by example and end these divisive, race-based caucuses. History equals founding equals, A predecessor to the caucus was founded in January 1969 as a Democratic Select Committee by a group of black members of the House of Representatives, including Shirley Chisholm of New York, Louis Stokes of Ohio and William L. Clay of Missouri. Black representatives had begun to enter the House in increasing numbers during the 1960s and they had a desire for a formal organization. The first chairman, Charles Diggs, served from 1969 to 1971. All the members of the caucus landed on the master list of Nixon political opponents. This organization was renamed the Congressional Black Caucus in February 1971 on the motion of Charles B. Rangel of New York. Founding members of the caucus were Shirley Chisholm, William L. Clay Sr., George W. Collins, John Conyers, Ronald Dellums, Augustus F. Hawkins, Ralph Metcalf, Parron Mitchell, Robert Nix, Charles Rangel, Louis Stokes, and Washington, D.C. Delegate Walter Fauntroy. Equals Trans Africa and Free South Africa Movement equals, in 1977, the organization was involved in the founding of Trans Africa, an education and advocacy affiliate that was formed to act as a resource on information on the African continent and its diaspora. They worked closely with this organization to start the national anti-apartheid movement in the U.S., Free South Africa movement and to devise the legislative strategy for the Comprehensive Anti-Apartheid Act of 1986 that was later signed by Ronald Reagan. The organization continues to be active today and works on other campaigns.
equals funding equals, in late 1994, after Republicans attained a majority in the House, they announced plans to rescind funding for 28 legislative service organizations, which received taxpayer funding and occupied offices at the Capitol, including the CBC. Then Chairman Kasim Fume protested the decision. The House did abolish the legislative service organizations, including the CBC, by a voice vote on H. Res. 6 on January 4, 1995, which prohibited a Euro OED establishment or continuation of any legislative service organization. The CBC reconstituted as a congressional member organization. In February 2010, the New York Times reported the caucus received $55 million in contributions from corporations between 2004 and 2008. Most of that money went towards the organization's charitable arm, the Congressional Black Caucus Foundation, which was founded in 1976. Scholarships controlled by the CBC Foundation were a source of public concern in September 2009 when it was reported Sanford Bishop and other members directed the money to members of their families and political allies. Equals Ralph Nader incident equals, in 2004, independent presidential candidate and consumer activist Ralph Nader attended a meeting with the caucus which turned into a shouting exchange. The caucus urged Nader to give up his presidential run fearing that it could hurt John Kerry, the Democratic Party's nominee. Representative Sheila Jackson Lee called the upcoming election a life-or-death matter for the caucus members' constituents. Nader accused Representative Melvin Watt of twice uttering an obscene racial epithet towards Nader. He alleged that Watt said, You're just another arrogant white man a euro telling us what we can do a euro it's all about your ego a euro another far euro king arrogant white man. Nader wrote to the caucus afterwards. Instead, exclamations at the meeting. End. Ed with the obscene racist epithet repeated twice by Yale Law School alumnus Congressman Melvin Watt of North Carolina. One member of your caucus called to apologize for the crudity of some of the members. I had expected an expression of regret or apology from Congressman Watt in the subsequent days after he had cooled down. After all there was absolutely no vocal or verbal provocation from me or from my associates, including Peter Miguel Canjo, to warrant such an outburst. In all my years of struggling for justice, especially for the deprived and downtrodden, has any legislator a Euro white or black a Euro used such language? I do not like double standards, especially since our premise for interactions must be equality of respect that has no room, as I responded to Mr. Watt for playing the race card. Therefore, just as African Americans demanded an apology from Agriculture Secretary Earl Butts and Senator Trent Lott a Euro prior to their resignation and demotion respective Elia Euro for their racist remarks, I expect that you and others in the caucus will exert your moral persuasion and request an apology from Congressman Watt. Please consider this also my request for such an expression a Euro a copy of which is being forwarded directly to Mr. Watt's office. What never offered an apology? Equals events equals, the caucus is sometimes invited to the White House to meet with the President. It requests such a meeting at the beginning of each Congress. Chairs of the caucus, the following representatives have served as chairs of the Congressional Black Caucus, Charles Coles Diggs, Jr. 1971 a Euro 1972, Louis Stokes 1972 a Euro 1974, Charles B. Rangel 1974 a Euro 1976, Yvonne Brothwaite Burke 1976 a Euro 1977, Paran James Mitchell 1977 a Euro 1979, Cardis Collins 1979 a Euro 1981, Walter Edward Fauntroy 1981 a Euro 1983, Julian Carey Dixon 1983 a Euro 1985, Mickey Leland 1985 a Euro 1987, Mervyn Malcolm de Morley 1987 a Euro 1989, Ronald V. Dellums 1989 a Euro 1991, Adolphus Towns 1991 a Euro 1993, Kissim Fume 1993 a Euro 1995, Donald M. Payne 1995 a Euro 1997, Maxine Waters 1997 a Euro 1999, James E. Clibben 1999 a Euro 2001, Eddie Bernice Johnson 2001 a Euro 2003.
Elijah E. Cummings 2003 Euro 2005, Melvin L. Watt 2005 Euro 2007, Carolyn Cheeks Kilpatrick 2007 Euro 2009, Barbara Lee 2009 Euro 2011, Emmanuel Cleaver 2011 Euro 2013, Marcia Fudge 2013 Euro 2015, G.K. Butterfield 2015 Euro present. Members of the caucus during the 114th Congress, Officers of the 114th Congress, G.K. Butterfield a Euro Chair, Yvette Clark a Euro First Vice Chair, Andrew Copyright Carson a Euro Second Vice Chair, Karen Bass a Euro Secretary, Hakeem Jeffries a Euro Whip. During the 114th Congress, the CBC has one senator, 43 voting representatives and two non-voting delegates as members. See also Congressional Black Caucus Foundation Congressional Caucus, African Americans in the United States Congress, Pan-African Congress, Trans-Africa Forum. References Bibliography, Singh, Robert. The Congressional Black Caucus, Racial Politics in the U.S. Congress. Thousand Oaks, California, Sage. External links, Congressional Black Caucus 2008 Brain Trust on Internet Safety, Congressional Black Caucus Website. Congressional Black Caucus Political Education and Leadership Institute, Congressional Black Caucus Foundation, A Voice, African American Voices in Congress, Congressional Black Caucus Holds Hearings on Police Brutality in Los Angeles, Corporate Black Caucus. Counterpunch, Black Commentator, How to Fix the Fractured Black Caucus, Black Caucus Meets with Raul Castro, CNN Video Report, April 8, 2009. C-SPAN Q&A interview with CBC Executive Director and General Counsel Angela T. Rye, June 10, 2012.